Hello and welcome to The Missing Link. I am here with Mr. Ely Zamaria, who is a life coach, hypnotherapist, and a motivational speaker. Yes, ma'am. How are you? Good. How are you? I'm doing good. I'm doing good. Thank you for inviting me. Thank good. you for WPAA, Public Access in Wallingford, to have me on the show. Um, it's a pleasure and it's an honor. Oh, well, welcome. So, um, you know, I was looking through your bio and um, reading about, you know, how you grew up and a couple of things, you know, that you have gone through in your life. Would you like to share a little bit with absolutely, us? Absolutely, absolutely. Uh, yeah, I grew up, I was born and raised in Beirut, Lebanon. So we grew up in kind of like tough, tough life. And in the beginning, it was nice. Everything was good. We live in harmony. We live, everybody lived, you know, nice together, Christian, Muslim, the whole thing. We were having no problem. And then suddenly the war started. Once the war started, everything changed. Everything completely switched, like 180 degrees. So now we became afraid on our, uh, on our lives. I was one of five boys. My parents were afraid on us. So we tried to escape that war. We tried to go somewhere else and mm -hmm. start a new life because we didn't think the war was going to end. And that's what, that's what we did. So we, uh, we tried to run away, uh, one, one after the other. So my mm -hmm. two brothers first went, and third one, I was number four, so we escaped. My parents packed everything, and we were gone. When you say you escaped, where did you escape to? Uh, we, I mean, <laughs> that's a good question. Everybody was a different place. So some of my brothers went to Arab countries, some of them went to uh, Europe, and uh, one of them came to the state. Mm -hmm. So we were like all over the place, and uh, it reminded me of a story. We didn't see each other for like almost... 10 to 15 years, we didn't meet all at once, the five together in one place. Wow. So when we finally met all at once, we were like, oh my God, this is a great party with five boys together. Mm -hmm. But wow. uh, that, that was tough. So mm -hmm. I went to Europe. Uh, mm -hmm. First, I went to Paris and uh, finished my high school because I couldn't finish it because of the war. Now, did you go to Paris on your own? Uh, I was on my own. I was living on my own because of the, the war. So I was like probably one of the few left that day. But two of my brothers were in Paris already, mm -hmm. and they were working there. So I went there as a student, mm -hmm. and I spent two years to have my high school diploma. Mm -hmm. So I went to, uh, we call it lycée in, in, in French. Mm -hmm. So I went to uh, high school, uh, finish my high school diploma, so okay. I can finish my education after. Wow. And you yeah. did that without your parents? Without, oh my God, yes. They were yeah. still in Lebanon. They were stuck. Uh, they had oh. their house, they have everything there, everything they built for, everything they worked for. My mm -hmm. dad worked many years to build this house. Right. And then he was stuck there, he couldn't leave it. Right. And same time, you know, like, uh, he couldn't come and see us. So he kept, like, working on and off because of the mm -hmm. war. Mm -hmm. And we were living by ourselves. Mm -hmm. Thank God my brothers are working so we can have, you know, income because my dad didn't have income most of the year. Wow. So it, kind of it was, it was rough. Mm -hmm. start of my uh, young uh, adult age. Mm -hmm. I was 18. I stayed in Paris till 20 years old. Mm -hmm. Now, did you just go with the flow? How were you with this? I mean, <laughs> I mean were you stressed like most teenagers would be stressed? Or? Well, yeah. I mean, I was, uh, I'm not going to call myself spoiled, but we had a good life. Mm -hmm. And same like any kids here. I know you're teachers, so you have your kids. And imagine one of your kids leave the country, the new country, new language, new tradition, mm -hmm. new habits, new everything. And you don't have a lot of money on top of it. So it's not like right. we are rich. Right. Yeah, people think, oh, you went to Paris. Well, we were poor in Paris. Mm -hmm. So we live in one apartment. Mm -hmm. No, I'm sorry. We live in the studio apartment. So one big room yeah. and three brothers. We stay there. The kitchen was oh. like probably not bigger than this area here. So it was tough, but we make it work. We managed. Mm -hmm. And finished my high school diploma and I was happy. Mm -hmm. Then I have to go for more education. Mm -hmm. My two brothers in Paris, they have to leave and they went different uh, country, Arab countries, mm -hmm. I believe at that time to work and to, you know, kind of learn and you have more experience. Mm -hmm. Another brother of mine, uh, Tony, he was in Brussels in Belgium. Mm -hmm. So I left Paris and I joined him there and I stayed with him a couple of years before he left um, to another journey. And I was there in Belgium to study, uh, my, you know, to finish my education. Okay. So, so that was that was the the journey, basically, kind of like you talk about stress and anxiety. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah, you have a lot of stress, a lot of anxiety. Yeah. So I've been, I was twenty years old. I lived already in three different countries, wow. completely different. Wow. So we talk from like Lebanon. We speak Lebanese, which mm -hmm. is our dialect, right? And Arabic. Yeah. 
You know, went to Paris, they speak French. Went to Brussels, they speak French and Flemish. And I have to train, I have to do different kind of education. So that's basically, in my talk, we mm -hmm. talk about this. So in my talk is basically, we talk about leadership. Mm -hmm. So going back, wait, so when you talk about your talk, mm -hmm. So in your motiv motivational speaking talk? Yes, Okay. correct. All right. I'm sorry, we okay. didn't mention yeah, yeah, that. No, we, no, we jumped no. Okay. In, the, in the beginning, we talked about it. Okay, so go ahead. Yes. Yeah. So yeah, I'm a life coach, mm -hmm. I'm a therapist, but also I do motivational mm -hmm. speaking. Right. And in, to, in my talk, I tell the story mm -hmm. that you're a 20-year-old kid. You have no idea what's going on. Right. You're, you're not mature enough. You're not smart enough. You don't have good experience. But I live already in three different countries. Right. And the third country is like I'm learning, you know, like going to school, going to technical school. I can afford college, so I went to technical right. school. And in the same token, we're poor. And the country won't let us, the, the government won't let us work because we're on student visa. Mm -hmm. So we couldn't work to pay some of our educa oh, education. Wow. And then back home, because of the war, my parents couldn't send us money to survive. Wow. So we have to pay rent, food, and not even talk about going out or doing anything fun because right. we can afford it. So what did you do? Well, we make it work. I don't know how, but that's mm. what, this is what I talk about leadership. This is what mm -hmm. I talk about where when you're, you have to be smart and we all have brain, we all have choices. Mm -hmm. So leadership to me is like about uh, communication skills, mm -hmm. it's about having a vision, it's about mm -hmm. having, making tough decisions. Mm -hmm. And that's to me is like, that's a great leader. When you look at leaders, sometimes presidents or, uh, you know, different kind of empowering kind of people, whatever, they are great leaders because mm -hmm. they have that vision, they have that communication skill. Right. I thought I did have this and I thought, you know, my parents raised me well, so I felt like, yeah, I can be a leader. Mm -hmm. But I wasn't leading people. Right. Okay. I was leader for my own life, okay. which is huge in my book. Right. If you can't take care of yourself, you can't lead yourself, guide yourself into doing great things with your life. How can you lead other people? Right. So I felt like my success come mm -hmm. from my inner leadership, mm -hmm. if you may call it this way. Mm -hmm. And that's what I create mm -hmm. when I was in Europe. So I learned how to, with nothing, with not even money, mm -hmm. how to be happy, how to succeed, how mm -hmm. to find fulfillment mm -hmm. in life. Mm -hmm. And that's my story and that's my success story. Mm -hmm. Okay. So that's what I, I want to teach and help people with. Right. So when you say find success, you're talking, can you explain when you... Big when house, big car, no, yeah. I'm just kidding. Yeah. <laughs> no, success <laughs> starts with, with in, within, okay? When you're successful as a person, that success is all about. Mm -hmm. You can have a lot of money and be a bad father or husband or mm -hmm. a wife or whatever. You're not successful. Right. You can have all the money in the world, you can have the biggest house. But if you're not good, if you're not, um, if you don't treat people right, you're not successful. Right. You're another person who's acting like something I'm not gonna mention. Right. So success is about inside, how you feel on the inside. Mm -hmm. Success is about what you have in your mind. This is what I talk about. Success is not how much money you have. Right. It's not about the, the, the clothes you wear, the shoes or the, you know, the, the car you drive. Right, right. That's nothing. That's just something that takes you from point A to point B. Right. The home, when you call a home, right. is where you feel comfortable. You can call a house and it's like $2 million, $3 million right, house. Right. If you don't feel like home, it's not home. Yes. And that's not success. Right. So yeah, when I talk about success, I talk about what's, how you feel. Not right. only this, how other people feel about you. Right. You can feel great about yourself because you believe you're doing the right thing. Right. But when you hurt people, when you treat people like garbage or not right, people don't respect you. Mm -hmm. Do you call that success? No matter how much money you have. No. And that's what right. I talk about. It's mm -hmm. not about, you know, and again, it's not about me, 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 me. Right. But I start with me because mm -hmm. I'm my biggest fan. Right. So when I take care of me, I take care of my life, I take care of my mind, my body, the whole thing, I become successful. Right. Okay, that's going to affect my job, my career, my family, mm -hmm. my kids, my wife, you know what I mean, my mm -hmm. friends. Yep. So that whole thing. Right. But if I'm not good, if not successful on the inside, if I don't have good leadership on the inside, life is empty. Life is wrong. So your, um, your talks and your mm -hmm. life coaching, mm -hmm. 
you help people reach success. Correct. Correct. I, I teach them how to reach success without anything, you know, like home, without anything, without their cars, without their thing. I teach them how, to, I teach them or guide them how to find success inside, mm -hmm. how to feel happy inside by, your, by themselves. Mm -hmm. If I say to you, the only reason, the only way I can be happy if you do this, this, this to me, if you buy me this, 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 right. if you help me, that's not happiness. That's like fake. So mm -hmm. happiness and success and fulfillment, all these, they go together. Mm -hmm. It's how you feel on the inside and how you present this or how to let this, you know, like out to people. Mm -hmm. How do you, what energy you send to the universe? Because mm -hmm. the way you treat people is the way, the best way to, to feel about yourself is treating people the nice way, the right way. Right. So if I come to you and I tell you, I am very depressed mm -hmm. and... I don't um, want to go to work. Mm -hmm. um, I don't want to take care of my kids. Mm -hmm. All I want to do is sleep. Mm -hmm. What would you? What would be a strategy that you would? That's do? that's a good question. First of all, I will ask you: Do you want to change? And what if I say no? Then why are you here? Okay. So fair, the person. So so the person has to want to change. And I've I've, 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 I've dealt okay. with this is a really good question because I used mm. to have a couple of clients that used to come to see me, yeah. and I wonder sometimes why you're here. Right. The only thing they did is talk yeah. about their issues. Right. And every time I try like to jump in or like excuse me, can I help? No, I won't talk about this. So I became like the hairdresser or the the you know the the best yeah. friend whatever. <laughs> I'm like okay, so I was like sitting there and not do anything because I couldn't help them because they didn't want to hear. Mm -hmm. They only want to hear themselves. And I'm sure you have someone like this in your family. Mm -hmm. They don't want to listen to anyone. Right. So to me, it's like, why are you here if you don't, want to, if you don't need help? Right. Step number one. Okay. Step number two, how bad do you want to change? Step number three, are you willing to work on it? Mm -hmm. So if you answer yes to these, or if you answer, um, I need to, I must, not I, I must change. Right. Do you work out? Mm-hmm. Okay. What do you say to yourself? I should work out once in a while or I must work out all the time? Which one is stronger? Which one has more power to it? I must. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. So your language, we talk about BLT mm -hmm. sometimes, the body language, the way you present yourself, the tone of voice and the thought. So if you say to yourself, I must work out every day or three times a week, mm -hmm. I must eat healthy food, I must take care of my mind, I must do this, that. So you have to you give yourself no choice, right. no other options. Right. That's leadership. That's what I talk okay. about. Okay, that's interesting. Yeah. It's, it's all yeah. about the way you talk to yourself. Mm -hmm. Leader won't say, well, you know what, guys? And he's talking to all these people. Yeah. Um, you know, I had a dream yesterday, and uh, I had a dream. And then <laughs> um, maybe, maybe we should mm -hmm. do something about that dream. What do you think, people? Right. People will be like, well, I don't know. I'm like, I don't feel like doing anything today. The other one is like, no, 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 I'm going to go home. Oh, you know what? You know, my coffee is getting cold, whatever, or I have to pick up my kids, whatever. Right. The leader won't say, we should do something about it. Leader don't give you choices. Right. He's like, let's do this. We're all together, right? Yeah. Yes, let's do this. So he, he's very firm. Mm -hmm. He has a vision, and he tells us what to do, how to do things. Right. What's the difference between a leader talking to his people and you talking to yourself about yourself, right. what you need to do with life, how are you going to approach life. It's, it's all the same thing. Mm -hmm. Leadership is about, I read a book one time, I believe it was, I forget who was there, there right about that. I thought it was, um, I forget his name now, but it will come to me. They said, the leader in you. Mm -hmm. That's the name of the book, the leader yeah. in you. And I listened to this book over and over and over. He was like so right. The way you, you organize everything in, in yourself, in your mind, the way you, you manage everything. That's what leaders, right. leaders are all about. You have a vision. You have a goal. You have a dream. Mm -hmm. What are you going to do about it? So if you come to me and you say you're depressed, I say, what are you going to do about it? And that's the easy, simple question. Mm -hmm. Now, it depends on your answer. It can be like, well, we're going to have fun together, work right. together, right. or have a nice day. Don't waste your time and money on me. Right, go home because right, right. you're not ready to do anything about it. Right. Did you ever smoke? In uh, the past? In the past, yes. How did you stop? 
willpower. Bingo. So you, you, you yeah. said, I need to stop. Right. No matter what the reason was it. Right. You said, I want to stop. Right. Same thing with me. I used to have some, you know, some habits. Yeah. I'm like, how to stop them? Well, I, I, made, it, I made a choice. Yeah. I changed because I made a decision. I chose to stop. Right acting one way or doing something or have mm -hmm. some kind of addiction and say, I want to stop that addiction. It's, mm -hmm. a, it's a bad behavior. Right. So what you do, you change it. And that's what I call leadership. Yeah. It's not just leadership to be, oh, they're, they're good looking, they're right. charismatic. Whatever. These are good for leaders. I mean, that helps. Right. But the leader is what's inside of you right. and how you're going to treat yourself and take care of that body of yours, mind of yours, mm -hmm. emotionally, mentally, spiritually, whatever. Right. Once you get that done, in the right way, take care of it every day, all the time. Don't give up on your body because you're, you're studying too much and then you're right. eating junk food. Right. Or don't work out, but you know, do something bad to, to, you know. It's almost like you drive a car, right? Right. What do you put in, unleaded or diesel? Unleaded. What happens if you put diesel? I'm not sure, <laughs> I don't wanna find out. It's gonna break, right? <laughs> yeah. The engine is gonna break. So what happens when you put diesel in your body, in your mind? Think about it. It's right. a machine. Yeah. It's going to break. And then you wonder, well, what's wrong with me? What happened to me? Why am I sick? Why am I overweight? Right, right. Why am I not thinking straight? I made bad decisions. Right. Because you're putting the wrong diesel, right. the wrong the gas, right, gas. Right, right. or the wrong right. food, yes. mental or right. you know, whatever. I mean, from spiritual to emotional to physical, it's all together. It's mm -hmm. the same body. Right. So what you put in it comes out. Mm -hmm. So it depends what, well, how you want to deal with that. Yeah. So that's my leadership kind of thing. Okay. So that so you have three types of different talks, right? Correct. You have a, um, the leadership talk, what you were just discussing. Just one of them, yes. Okay. And we then have the missing it. link to your success story. Okay. We talk about it in another uh, show. Okay. And that's basically talk about stress and anxiety, mm -hmm. which is huge in our society. Mm -hmm. Like everywhere you look at, mm -hmm. you will like have stress and have anxiety. I do too. Right. But what I deal with, how I deal with them, what I do with them, is different than the person next to me. Right. He can be like pulling his hair out, like mm -hmm. screaming and you know hitting his head. Mm -hmm. I'll be like, well, it's a situation. Right. Stressful. What I need to do about it is get out of this situation. So I'll look back at my experience, my yeah. life coaching experience, or maybe just background or whatever, knowledge, and I look to find the solution for that stress, that issue, that problem, that challenge. Yeah and get out of it. So that's what I do. Okay, and the third one is talk about confidence and self-esteem. Mm -hmm. And that is huge, that's another big talk. And basically I'll look at people just straight in the eyes and I can tell if they're confident or not. Uh-oh. You better watch out. <laughs> <laughs> no, but think about it this way. Where people look at each other, they look at the eyes, they look at the spine, the feature, the, the facial kind of, and they can see if someone's looking at them or looking down, looking away, or mm -hmm. looking a different way. They look at the body language. They feel like kind of like somebody's moving different direction mm -hmm. and don't know what to do with their body. You can tell if they're confident or not right away. Self-esteem the same way. But these same people are applying for jobs, mm -hmm. are going out on dates, are dealing with their family, are managing, or whatever. Right. And you look at them like, how did you survive all this time? Because you can tell they are, no, they are not confident. So your talk talks helps people with Absolutely. problems? Absolutely. Okay. Absolutely. Yeah, I, I give example stories like mm -hmm. my grandmother used to do it for me. Mm -hmm. I tell a story. I said, this is a story for someone who didn't have that kind of, you know, confidence whatever. Mm -hmm. Or this story will help you building your confidence. Because mm -hmm. confidence is something that... If I tell you a quick story about when I was this big, probably like five, six years old, mm -hmm. I was very shy. I had anxiety. So you haven't been shy and or anything since you were five or six? Yes. No. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> so, well, usually, no, I'm not, I'm not going to answer this one today. <laughs> that's, that's would be a lot of talk. But I was so shy. Mm -hmm. I had so, so much anxiety. I had no confidence. I had no self-esteem, like zero. My parents didn't know what to do with me. And back then, we didn't have therapists. We didn't have someone who's like, you know, give you the right pill or something. We, right. we had nothing. So I learned how to get out of it by building my own confidence. And now, as you can see, I don't shut up. Yeah. <laughs> and that's what I can do. So you learned how to build your own confidence at age five and six. 
Uh, no, know. I was five, six to almost ten, eleven. Okay. I was oh, that you, a mess. You, okay. I was okay. a mess. I have no idea. Okay. Once I hit kind of like teenager kind of mm-hmm. uh, age, I'm like, hmm, I need to do something about this because I'm like, I can't be like this all my life. Mm-hmm. I used to cry. Like my brothers used to come to me, one, two, up, oh, here we go. And my tears would drop like like oh. nothing, like rain. Okay. I'm like, oh my God. And they, they still make fun of me, like, you know, yeah. tell stories about yeah, me. I'm right, like, right. what's wrong with you people? We're adult now. Right. So all this stuff, all whatever happened, all the pain that I had from this, one day I decided to like, 180 degrees, I switch, mm-hmm. I decide to do something about it. Mm-hmm. And as you know me, I'll, I started dancing, I started doing line dance, and not line dance, but different kind of dancing, like social, mm-hmm. ballroom, stuff like that. So mm-hmm. that helped me to feel like, hmm, mm-hmm. I feel good about myself, so I don't have to be that shy. Mm-hmm. And then became like, obviously, a little comedian, that not people think I'm yeah. funny, but some people do. So I became like funny stories, tell funny stories. So when I told funny stories, people laugh and they want to hear more. That built my confidence somehow. I don't know how, but right. make me get out of my little bubble, right, my right, little box, right. and I step outside that box. Right. And then one day, I learned that I can't stop talking, and people ask me whatever, whatever they can. I'm like, here's the way I did it. Mm. Here's the way I can. I help myself doing mm. this. No medication, no therapist, no life coaching, nothing. Mm-hmm. I did this on my own. And if I go back to see where, how I did it, well, I was in too much pain. Mm-hmm. I had to decide how to get out of it. Mm-hmm. And the pleasure of people noticing me, that gave me more confidence. Mm-hmm. People like talking about me, good right. way, give me more confidence. Right, right. So I built it up slowly, like small blocks. Right. And that's what happened. So what kind of um, background as far as education do you have is with the, um, uh, and the therapy and the life coaching? That's, that's good. Uh, good question again. What I did uh, for a while, I was, um, I was dating someone, and she has these tapes about big motivation kind of speaker. And I'm like, can I listen to these tapes? She's like, sure. But I always have positive kind of attitude to life. Mm-hmm. I listen to them. I like what I heard. Mm-hmm. And I'm like, hmm, I want to see what his background and I heard he's like a certified in neuro linguistic programming, neuro linguistic program, which is nervous system, linguistics, la- uh, language, mm-hmm. both verbal and nonverbal programming, the way you program yourself, mm-hmm. and hypnotherapist. So I'm like, I like I liked that. I like the sound of it. I like what I heard. I like mm-hmm. the tapes, the way he talks. So I said, well, I want to try that. So I learned it. I went to school, like uh, get certifi- certified in this, mm-hmm. and became... Uh, license in that okay. so that helped me people say oh well, help me you're, you're so positive you're so mm-hmm. you know you look at life different can you help mm-hmm. me with this I have this issue so I became a life coach like overnight and oh. I started helping people okay then people say why you should do like talk you should go to school talk right. to kids whatever so I became public or motivation speaking speaker and that helped me also but you know what started all this kind of thing? When I was in Europe and I finished my study, mm-hmm. I went to Brussels, finished all my education, and my visa expired. And visa expired means immigration wants you out of the country. But I have a little problem. I still time problem. So my country was under fire. Beirut airport was closed. Right. My family already left, sold everything. My dad sold the apartment, furniture, everything. Even per- personal stuff, he sold everything with the apartment. And he came to the state. So I applied to come to the state. I got denied three times. Wow. No visa. So immigration knocking on my door. My country's under fire. There's no, I can, the, the plane won't even, you know, land there. And my parents are here, and I can't come here. Now you talk about stress and anxiety. Yeah. You talk about leadership. This is what made me who I am today. I had to deal with this. Wow. I was 25 years old. Wow. And I don't know if you remember that movie with Tom Hanks. They called uh, the name of the movie Terminal. Mm-hmm. He was stuck in the airport with no visa. Same kind of situation. Yeah. But he was in the terminal. He was in the airport. Right. I was in my in the apartment with my youngest brother, who right. we were together for a couple of years. And I was with him. And... The police knocked on my door. They want me to leave. So I explained. I'm like, I have no place to go. And they look at me like, what do you mean? So I explained my situation. And they look at me 
in a way where like they felt bad for me. <laughs> they felt sorry. <laughs> like they were like, okay, you know what? Stay as long as you need until you get a visa, and then when you're ready, give us the your ID, whatever, and you can leave. They were nice about it because they had no choice. What yeah. they're gonna put me in prison? Right. I didn't do anything wrong. Yeah. So they left me there for like oh. maybe six months to nine months. Finally, my parents somehow they found this lawyer who helped with immigration papers and gave me a training visa, mm. and I came to the state. Wow. Again, we're talking about leadership. We talk about confidence. Mm -hmm. We talk about mm -hmm. all this, all this growing pain. We're gonna right. call it. Help me to accomplish this. Right, right. And that's what I talk about. Basically how you go from this to this so and i accomplished a lot wow. by doing this yeah. and this is my fourth country by the way i live here for my fourth country wow well you know some people they never left their hometown right, right. i live in four different countries wow. four different almost four different languages wow. and i learned to adapt now wow. that's to me yeah. leadership right so, but so, yeah, so you have a lot to offer people and you have a lot to share. I think I do. I think teach. I do. And I love telling my story. I love mm -hmm. sharing my story. Like mm -hmm. I told my friends, they were like, you're, you're, you know, you should do this for a living. I'm like, mm -hmm. well, maybe one day. Right, right. At, at my age no, now, I no. think, you know, yeah. why not? <laughs> well, you've been doing it all along and now you're rebranding. Absolutely. Right, and trying to get out and um, you want to do, you're looking to um, work to help with, people, whatever. Help yeah. people, businesses, um, even schools, school, high schools, yeah, school, colleges, high schools. Okay. and businesses. Yes. Okay. I love doing that. Okay. Um, can you tell, um, you know, us how we can reach you? Absolutely. Yeah. Um, I, you know, you can reach me at my phone number. Mm -hmm. Okay. My cell number. You can reach me personally, text me, whatever the easiest way is. Mm -hmm. The number is 203 915 6067. That's 203 915 Six zero six seven. <laughs> you better write it down. And then the other way is like basically my first and last name dot com. That will be my new website coming out soon. Okay. And just because I want to give back to the society, to to the community, whatever you you know, if somebody want to reach out to me, I give free consultation. I'll talk to them right. for free for like 10, 15, 20 minutes, whatever they need to. Right. If I have time, of course. If not, they can text me. I'll call them la later. But they can call me, and mm -hmm. I give them free consultation. Okay, if they need help, wonderful. then we can schedule something, a meeting or a session. Okay. But I give free consultation. Usually my consultation are I guide them, send them in the right direction. Mm -hmm. At least whatever they tell me, I can give them suggestion. Okay. If they want to do more, of course. Right. If they want to hire me for like speaking engagement or something like that for their company, team, whatever, I'm also open for that. Okay. And yeah, they can reach me, like I said, firstlastname.com. Okay. That should be my website. That's my uh, new rebranding, like you call it. Yes. And I would love to, to help people. I'd love to, to share my knowledge, experience, or whatever uh, background, or, uh, you know, my, uh, the way I, I can help you, like, give my tools, basically, the way mm -hmm. I use my tools. Mm -hmm. It's all, we all have the same tools. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You have the same tools, I have the same tools. Right. So by doing this, I can help people, and I feel good about it. That's my passion. All right. Well, great. Well, thank you. My pleasure. And thank you for joining us on the Missing Link to Success.